Good morning, everybody. Our local character this week is Frankie Valenti, the actor, the entrepreneur, the businessman, the former porn star. Welcome to the show, Frankie. Thanks, Bob. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Somebody told me that it's your birthday today. Who told you that, Bob? <laughs> Happy birthday. Thank you, sir. It's a real privilege and an honor to be here on my birthday. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about your beginnings in Provincetown. So I think like most people, I just sort of washed up. I call myself a wash ashore. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually on Nantucket initially. And at 21 years old, newly gay from Ohio, mm -hmm. Nantucket wasn't really my vibe, wasn't really feeling it. So before I went home, there was a guy that I was waiting tables with. And he was like, before you should throw in the towel, you should go over to P-Town. I'm like, what's, what's P-Town? He goes, <laughs> and I went and checked it out, and that was 20 seasons ago. Oh my god. Yeah, my first job was at the Boat Slip. So you're, there's a picture of you on the wall there. There is, of that first season, and that floral, green, loud, <laughs> Golden Girls motif. 2001? 2000. 2000. Mm -hmm. So this would have been your 21st season. Correct. That's so funny, because we just talked to Rick Murray, who is celebrating his 20th year at the Crown and Anchor. The Red Inn Boys, it's their 20th year at the Red Inn. Paul Finizzi, it's his 20th You're year at Finizzi. All three of them. I feel like I'm part started. of a generation. You are. That's great. They're all considerably older than you are. Right. Phillips. <laughs> 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 Phillips the closest in age. Considerably. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a nice long chunk of your life. Yeah, I feel like I grew up here. I, I do too. I really, really do. And especially, we talked about this earlier, about how a lot of um, our working lives here have been sort of parallel. Like, we both worked for Earl at Purgatory. Mm -hmm. Rocco at Edwige. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, the boat slip. My picture's on the wall somewhere there, too. But most recently, I think people would probably know you from the Dune Tours and the Aqua Bar. Yeah, so Dune Tours, what a great gig. Um... I decided I needed to change about eight seasons ago. I didn't know what to do, because as you know, it's all pretty much the service industry. Mm -hmm. So Rob came up and I remember he kept asking me, are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure you don't want to get like a bartending gig? And back then I was just kind of burnt out on, you know, picking up plates and slinging booze. Mm -hmm. So I started doing the, the, the Dune tours and just to be required to know a lot about Provincetown and then just acquiring more knowledge I am so sold on this town now on a whole different level. There's like a whole deeper appreciation for this town. That's really sweet. Yeah, it is. It is. It's really nice. We're, it trying, to get, we're trying to get him to come on this show too, Rob Costa. If you're listening. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm his right hand man. <laughs> um, but aside from that, you're making some masks right now too, right? Yeah, so I kind of fell into this uh, just by happenstance. Um, I have a sewing machine. I know how to sew. A good friend of ours, Sean Patrick Harrington, mm -hmm. he started doing them on his website. And I have my own website, and I'm just like, well, I can do this too, right? He goes, absolutely, run with it. And, you know, knock on wood, it's been a full-time gig, and I've made a good amount of money, and I'm very grateful to all of you for supporting me and my venture. And I actually have one. You do. It's, yeah, it's one of my best sellers. So it's called The Sipper. I worked very hard on this one. So, this is for a socially distanced, sort of, not so quarantine. <laughs> the challenge is getting the straw into the hole, mm -hmm. but once you do it, it works pretty well. That is so funny because I feel like everybody wanted something like that at the beginning of all this. And they're yeah. like, all they need to do is make one where you can sip, sip your drink while yep. you're wearing it. Well, I did. <laughs> and you can get it at trybeingfrank.com. So here's my obligatory plug for my website, trybeingfrank.com. All sorts of masks and good stuff. Uh, can we talk about Run for a second? Yeah, let's, let's talk about Run. So Run would have been your second theatrical release, run, like feature film. Run would have been my baby because Tiger Orange I was an actor for. Um, I had no real creative input mm -hmm. with uh, Tiger Orange, but with Run, I co-produced it. I wrote it with uh, my buddy Craig Otto, and like we made that film from sitting in my living room, sketching out characters, mm -hmm. to sitting in the editing room over and over and over and over 
again, just cutting and splicing, color correcting. So just being a part of that whole process mm -hmm. and seeing it like up on the screen, as you know, was was pretty uh, pretty cool. Um, but the timing did not work out for us. Um, you know, film festivals are really funny because there's so many regulations. Like you can't have a premiere in two different festivals on the same coast. So you, you okay. can have an East Coast premiere right. and a West Coast premiere, but you gotta be really strategic on who your world premiere is because you only blow your wad one time. Right. So if you get, let's say, Provincetown Film Festival um, wants you as their world premiere, mm -hmm. well then you can't premiere at Sundance or Tribeca or South by Southwest. So all that being said, it took about a year to kind of get through that A-list mm -hmm. of festivals to get all the no's. And then um, everything kind of hit. And as we were talking about before, you know, art had, for art to be profitable, I, th I think it, and sellable, I think it has to be reflective of the times. Mm -hmm. And my story was just all, you know, fun and cute and all kind of thing. And that's not the times we're living in. Right. And I just don't think this is the right time for Run to be seen by the public. But for people that don't know, your co-stars included Academy Award winner Marley Matlin. Oh, right. Yeah, her. Alan Cumming. Oh, yeah, him. Like, it was a, yeah, it so was a big production. It was a big production. You know, I, I forget to talk about that. Thank you for bringing it up again. Um, <laughs> Alan was uh, a co-star, and Marley Matlin was also a co-star because it has a deaf uh, theme to it. And we really thought that having those two people on the bill mm -hmm. would have given us um, a lot more notice. And maybe it did. You know, maybe people did see and go, wow, this is really good. But with everything going on right now and what we have coming in, it's just not going to be competitive enough. Who knows? But to work with Alan Cumming and to work with Marley Matlin and signing mm -hmm. while I was doing it because I... I didn't have to learn sign language, I already knew it, mm -hmm. which was another reason why this film, this idea came to be. And just, you know, working with those two was, if nothing happens with this film, working with Marley Matlin, Alan Cumming, and having my mother in the film was all worthwhile. So, Have you felt inspired by these times to write something that is more reflective of right now? No. I mean, yes and no. I mean, I, I know the game. A little bit better if that makes any sense mm -hmm. um, I don't feel inspired to write anything because I'm so consumed with just trying to make it mm -hmm. I think we're all in this holding pattern of just holding our breaths and just trying to do what needs to be done just to get by right I know like this is the creative outlet that we've found for ourselves which I think is great thank you yeah it's got to be nice but it's but I've also like you know everybody's like what are you writing and I'm like I, I'm, I said this to Ryan Landry when we were interviewing him. I feel stuck because of the times. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, if, it feels like if you're not writing something about right now, or like if the characters aren't all wearing masks at the grocery store in your movie, so I'm like, should I be writing a period piece? Because I don't want to write what's happening right now yet. Uh huh. I feel like I don't have enough distance from it because it's still happening. Yeah. And I don't have the proper perspective. Yep. Yeah. So, so I'm like, what are people writing? We actually, my, my business partner and I talked about scrapping the entire end mm -hmm. and then just doing something, you know, present time related. Mm -hmm. But I was like, oh, I have so much more gray in my beard <laughs> and everyone is so much older now because we use kids in the movie and right. all these characters that have gained weight and they've lost weight and it just would have cost a lot of money, a lot of CGI, man. <laughs> Thinking that, I think, I think what's happening in this town is that we're seeing another shift. Right. I think we're seeing a lot of businesses just get, I don't want to say pushed out, but things are just evolving for mm -hmm. whatever reason. And a lot of it is like, you know, COVID related. Right. But it's evolution. And I think things are evolving and people are leaving and people are coming in. And it, it's always like that here. It's always like that here. And it's... everybody wants to say, oh, it's so different from when I first got here. But, I mean, when you first got here, it was different from 10 years before that. Right, and that should be embraced. I think that is really important. Um, something I've learned personally in the last couple of years, appreciate what, what you've experienced and what you're living in right now. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't, I miss those days that when we were here 15, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Of course I miss them, and I'm glad I was here for them. And I'm like, 
what's going to be next? Right. What's going to be next? Well, what is next for you? Like, we're going to come back next summer. Yeah. So I think what's next for me is that um, I'm going to come back because this is a home base for me. It always will be. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the challenge is keeping it fresh and new. Um, Rob and I have some ideas uh, for the business. I'm not part owner, but I love what he does and I love being a part of what he does. If next summer is going to be like this, at least we have a heads up of like what to expect. Yeah, and um, I'll make you a sippy mask. Thank you, please. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for coming. Oh, it's so show. my pleasure. It's really good to it's see you. It's a great way to spend the uh, birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Bye, guys. See you guys.